Michael, you with the intro? Yeah, but I, I lost the tab, which... <laughs> which oh, it's fine. Uh, the number 87. Yeah, that was the question. Okay. <laughs> All right. Bitcoin Core app call, design call number 87. Let's go. Yeah, I have to leave in half an hour or so doctor's appointment. No worries, Christoph, you are excused. Thank you. I, I feel so terrible. <laughs> so, so terrible to me. You should. This is, this is the most important call of the whole week. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay. Let's be you, you just don't care about Bitcoin that much, Christoph. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So I I prepared a usability test report with some designs, so maybe I can start with this. Yeah. Well, That's how do you fine. want to do it, Jakob? Do you want me to to share the the um? No, I have slides. You oh. I have slides. I have everything. Go for it, Jakob. Let me share. So maybe I mean, Mo, you can chime in and like uh, disrupt if you have something to add, but maybe. Uh, let me go through the slides first and then we can kind of discuss the problems separately if there will be some I don't know, questions or discussions. Sounds good. So, uh, okay, okay, okay. Okay, do you see that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. No. No. That's probably your 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 side. Okay, I'll be done. You see? Oh, okay. Oh yeah, I start. So we tested uh, with Mo. Mo tested. Uh, I think three people. I tested one so far. Mo is has I think two more scheduled. Uh. So we tested create wallet flow uh, up until the clock visible. Um, so I'm going to show just the screens where there was something insightful or some issues arose. So I will not show all screens of the flow, just just were uh, in the order those screens where there was something to, to add or to change. Uh, so one of the first comments from the user testers the com the uh, mo tested was that for some reason uh, and i don't fully get it that uh, uh, it was strange for the user that there's different there's the same pattern for this kind of educational screens and this configurational scheme screens hey, um, uh, sorry sorry to interrupt we didn't yep. already talk about that one that was ferrero mm, so maybe we... i don't know if on the call yeah, it's just. I'm like pretty sure we talked about that last time, and we 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 realized we we weren't quite we didn't really see the problem in it either. And yeah, he, yeah, he yeah, or yeah. she came up with proposed some other designs. This was the proposal. Yeah. 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 So I just right. I just wanted yeah. to mention it, but I also think it's not that important to uh, to do anything with it, but yeah. it's worth mentioning. Uh, and. So with block clock, uh, uh, that uh, didn't fully get the last sentence. Uh, so what does it mean? It represents the current day. <clears throat> so I just I just suggest to slightly adjust the copy uh, that it just says literally that it's within twelve hour time frame. Uh, so this is just a slight uh, adjustment. Uh, yeah, um, what one change there could also be just like we have in the design docs, have a little arrow that points at one of the segments and that kind of explains that this is one block. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, I actually took took a look before the call on the on the uh, docs and uh, I had a thought, oh, maybe we can just add it <laughs> yeah. to the design yeah. because it's it actually explains it quite well. And I think also I don't have any comments mentioned? I don't have anything written down, but I, I got an impression that uh, the user I tested didn't fully get 
what block like what it is and how it works at the end of the flow. So maybe I think there is some potential to maybe help kind of explain what's happening to the users better. Also with yeah. the status of, of blocks, right? Of the, the I think of these dots. The, there's a consideration here. It just says the block lock, which is that's the name. Okay, but but why? You know? And we could just say a quick glance of what's going on in the network or the okay. status of your node. Mm -hmm. check the status or status summary notes like just something else that it's actually about the use case mm -hmm. because when we're when we're describing little segments and stuff that's that's almost like the manual right mm -hmm. and at this point it's like we just kind of want you to get the idea yeah. uh, mm -hmm. about what this is for and what you can expect from this unique looking piece of interface right mm -hmm. uh, yeah. and maybe not quite worry yet about like exactly what each pixel uh, stands for. So we, we yeah. could reframe the copy on this screen. Yeah, but I also like that it introduces the basic concept of Bitcoin that is each block. I also changed a bit the first sentence mm -hmm. so that each block of transactions, I added this of transactions, I think it may, might help a bit to understand this. But uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's also this educational part of Bitcoin network in general. All right, well, let's move on. Uh, storage, storage location, storage amount. I think these are the screens with the most problems. Yeah. Uh, uh, so my, my the user I tested, he actually thought that he for some reason it's not written here, but he thought the default is like stored in a cloud, and then mm. custom and like he chooses custom if he wants to store it on his device. That's what he understood of it. Uh, one user also uh, voiced a request to just to know what's the default directory. Mm -hmm. uh, um, so uh, let's let's move on so to the. That's actually um, yeah. the UI PR is addressing that. There's some discussion happening, and uh, so it's a little bit different on desktop and on mobile because on mobile the. Uh, directories are sandboxed per application so it's not globally the same but you might just see different but, uh, mm -hmm. it's like sandbox basically um but i think the latest discussion was to show both directories including the default one uh, yeah nice that's that's yeah. a good so it should yeah. be addressed i think uh there's the second screen uh yeah one user is they don't know what's the advantages of reducing storage i'm not exactly sure if we need to really explain it more here i, I mean it uses less gigabytes so that's main advantages right mm -hmm. um uh they also mentioned that it'd be nice to add a warning if the storage exceeds the available amount um and for my user i tested he he was kind of confused like he wasn't sure if this screen and the previous so storage location and amount relates to the same data and he was he was kind of assuming that it's some kind of different data and he has to choose you know again a kind of different storage settings for something else and he didn't know if this is the same uh, so he was a bit confused here I just want to chime in here as well. If you just stay on this one, yeah. one. There would, I'm not sure if it was this screen, two gigabytes, four forty gigabytes, as uh, storage available. I think it might be the screen before. Uh, so here it was one gigabyte. Uh, yeah, here it's one gigabyte, and here it's two gigabyte. I guess that's just a copy issue. Yeah, some people that's were true. sharp enough to actually notice that, but I mean, it's a prototype, so you know. That is a different amount, yeah. That the, the amount was different, yeah. Uh, but also for my user, it was confusing that my user, <laughs> for a user I tested, it was confusing that he, he went to storage settings, uh, and he was confused why there is a storage limit here when it clearly says how much it needs, right? So he was kind of confused that I guess you can change it. Uh, 
yeah, that's 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 one small tidbit. And so my recommendation is to actually swap those screens if that's possible. Mm. So first, first choose a storage amount, and then choose a storage location. I think it's a bit more clear order that you just decide yeah how much you want to store data and then uh, then where you want to store it. And also on the sec on the screen which is now second, which is storage amount, we say that the data is stored on your device, right? Uh, and in the current prototype, it's a second screen. And I guess it's more related to the location actually, right? That it's stored on the device. So, uh, it, uh, um, well, it's a general location that it's stored in the device, but then the location is detailed, you, you choose the directory. But I think it's just more nat a bit more natural order if you, if you choose first. Like you learn that, okay, Bitcoin stores on my computer. How much do I want to store it? And then you choose, okay, uh, where do I want to store it? I was also thinking of maybe even doing this all in one screen, but I haven't come up with a design that probably would complicate it uh, a lot. So I don't think it's a good solution. Uh, I adjusted the copy a bit. Uh, mostly I just, here was default. Now I just add the default application directory in the title. Uh, yeah, it also made the size of those the same, so it's a kind of a bit nicer, nicer looked. And I changed detailed settings to custom settings because I think custom says better that okay, you have these two kind of choices, but you can also change, you know, how much you want to use data even more more custom comes customized uh so in a way this custom settings is i guess if you choose custom settings you don't choose neither of those two right because i i guess one of the confusion he he got about yeah why there is in custom set in detailed settings why there's two gigabytes he he was kind of confused it's in contrary to those two settings and it is in contrary because if you choose it if you change it i guess then there is no uh, those two settings are not like active anymore, um, and uh, and then okay so if the user chooses let's say store all data and it's 404 gigabytes and then they go to the second screen if they have insufficient space we we can show it here right so we can show okay, you cannot use default application directory because you don't have enough space, you have to use custom one. Or yeah, maybe if they delete some space or move some space, it could uh, change. Uh, uh, yeah, so that's the recommendation for storage. Yeah. Uh, starting initial download. So one feedback here was that after clicking start, it just jumps to any notifications without any feedback if it started without any like status uh, and also the user from the uh, which proposed the first, the first designs uh he suggested it could be like the end and uh user could now choose if they want to create or import wallet or enable notifications i also not sure if this is good because they already can skip it, right? But it's also recommended, I think, to do to do this. So I'm not sure if this is uh, this is a good, good solution. Uh, although I don't know why skip buttons are not here, but no, this one you cannot skip. So, right. Sorry, can you say that again? <coughs> the... This one. But um, the notifications. So what is it? Uh, so the user was. Oh yeah, I guess... the, the the label, the start button label needs to change just to next or continue. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I yeah, actually, it, it's just I'm a not, label. I'm not sure if I agree. Uh, let's come to the solution I came up with. So, okay. yeah, just adding a confirmation of initiating the download. So I would probably leave start because that's what you do. And then just confirm it started. Mm -hmm. Don't start it. And then there's still next button. Uh, that's that's what I came up with. Uh, 
then there's an enable notification screen and I was actually also quite confused here because like on the surface notifications just uh, I think in most applications it just it's just a question if you want to be notified by some events but the copy here suggests uh, to load and verify transactions uh, and I was a bit confused and I think the user was also confused if that means okay so if I not enable notifications I will not verify transactions at all so blocks will not be verified uh, you know in the background uh, so is, is it correct is it about the verification of the blocks or is it only about notifications so I wasn't so actually you... sure as well yeah so if you if you do not enable if you do not enable it then um android will kill the application once you start using it it's gonna stop it's gonna prevent this the the block download from happening by having this persistent notification we can keep the application alive and, and have it continue the block download so it is it is an uncommon use for notifications However, it's not completely uncommon in Android. For example, I tried or um, for accessibility, there's an application called Voice Access or so that allows you to control the UI with just your voice. And that actually also is a persistent notification uh, that allows you to enable or disable that feature. So there, there's some stuff happening in Android where it's not only used to inform mm -hmm. you about things. It's also used as, I don't know, a control mechanism or yeah. I don't know what you would call that. Yeah, I get it. So actually my recommendation is wrong because I assume the other stuff. So I assume mm -hmm. it's only about notifications if your incoming or ongoing transactions uh, are, uh, you know, if you get some transactions. But in that case, if it's if it's also about, you know, running in the background notification, I would probably change the title and copy and maybe image not to focus on notifications that much, but to focus on working in the background, right? So do you yeah. want to, do you want do you want the app to work constantly in the background uh, and yeah, mention it, notifications as well? But, but yeah, I would. so there is a notification, and that notification will always have the status of your notes. So I mean, technically, you can. Yeah, the, app, the the phone is in locked mode. And you can just swipe down, look at your notification, and just see what the status is. But that's, I mean, that's not not really a huge benefit there. I would say. Is there <clears throat> is there a way to only show the because you only need this for the Android use case, right? If anybody goes on desktop, then he doesn't actually need this, right? Correct. So, if, so because that that might also be something that's confusing because it's a it's a desktop, let's say UI screen, right? And and uh, you actually wouldn't need to enable notifications on the on the desktop version only on the on the Android one or on the on the mobile one. So ideally, you would not see this at all if you're on desktop. But what aren't you able to? Disable this on desktop and then just verify only when you open the app, like uh, consciously. Yeah, I mean the, the that logic of the operating system suppressing the application just doesn't apply on desktop. Okay. It's really only a mobile thing, yeah, and we should only really show it on mobile. Okay, so then. But, I but think the, the, point is, the point later, is still valid, right? That the copy is still kind of, uh, yeah, the, the copy will be key here. Yeah, I would focus sure. on working in the background, like working in the, somehow working in the background and mention the notifications, but I wouldn't choose a title like this because for me, I think it kind of, for most users, it indicates it's mostly about notifications and just, do you want to be notified? That's but true, it should show the benefit maybe. Yeah. And open oh notifications God. too. Thanks, Mike. Mm -hmm. um, and later on, once we have yeah. all the features, we could also use notifications to tell people about incoming transactions. So, but uh, I'm sorry, I have to get going now. All right, Chris. Um, but this is awesome. Love it how we're getting into those details. Very so, good. See you later. Uh, bye, Chris. Yes, bye, bye. Uh, so next screen is back up your wallet. Uh, so two users expected to see seed phrase yeah so for one it was confusing for the other it was a positive surprise that's that's nice to kind of hear uh and i just 
suggest maybe we can add Bitcoin Core does not support recovery phrases. Yes. <laughs> Although I'm I'm kind of I wonder if it's in in a way a, a good philosophy to kind of refer to you know outside protocols in Bitcoin Core, but this is kind of high level core philosophy, which I don't know if you want to hear, but on the other hand it would really help for the user that are already used to recover phrases, yeah. which is most most users, right? Yeah, I do want to chime in on that one. We there is there are certain user expectations when they're setting up the whole wallet process, and one of them is the recovery phrase. So I think there is this expectation, which was in the two people that I interviewed, that they were expecting to see a next screen with the recovery phrase. Um, yeah. So I do think it's worth mentioning something about that. Yeah. Uh, ah, that's end. That's that's it, basically. That's yeah. The end. This is really nicely done, Jakob. I think we could even add this into the. Uh, I like how you did the recommendations as well. I think we could definitely add this in, like as a showcase to like to the UX research toolkit as well. How you can show um, usability test results as well. I think this is uh, this is really nice. So thank you so much for putting that together. Yeah, thanks for really nice for the, for the data. <laughs> to wrap up with with the research bit in terms of what's been done here, so we 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 now did um, the create wallet user flow, so we tested it out. So I just basically put a green on all of them because that's done. This one's done, and now we just shared it with the product team. The documenting bit, um, we're documenting it in the Bitcoin um, this Bitcoin design meta repo so i'm happy to document it in there um, so everything's in public so I, i'm happy to do that on my side uh, Jakob, because i genuinely enjoy documenting things um, i'm doing another user test tomorrow with a uh, existing core user um Jakob, i don't know if you want to show them the new prototype or if you'd like that i show them the existing prototype um, Completely up to um, you. Uh, I think we can show them the improved one. Yeah. I mean, it's it's seen some changes, so I tried to do them tonight, and I will let you yeah. know if I did it uh, and pro I prototype it. Uh, so I will include the storage location that the PR is ready. So I'll check it out, and I will change the notification screen. Yeah. And um, all all we discussed, I'll try to adjust, and then we can just show it. Maybe you know most of the problems will disappear, and we'll discover some others. So I think that's 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 a good. Uh, we don't have to. That's, that's the same. Yeah, and then I guess we're finished with this part over here, and then we can even move into activity receive and send. But I mean, I know that's um, that's one step further. But it feels like we're fairly good with this one now in terms of. Um, Maybe we can show this prototype, the new prototype, to one or two more people. But it feels like we could then even move on to the activity um, receive and send. Um, I know that's uh, <laughs> very ambitious, but uh, that's uh, that's plans for the for the. Yeah, we, we, we need to design it first, right? I mean, we, we have, have some design, design it first. Time. Yeah, exactly. But that's the the ambitious next plan. Yeah, I'm going. I'm going to have more time after Oslo and. BTC yeah, Frog, sure. I'll, yeah, I'll have same. much more time. Same. Is there anything else anyone would like to share? Johnny, Michael? Um, <clears throat> I don't really have much. I'm working on uh, how to select the wallet, but uh, I am curious about uh, wallet creation. Yeah. Uh, it sounds so. Can, is it is it on the Figma or or uh, you know what what can I look at for um, sort of what what you guys consider the latest and greatest for that? Uh, uh, I, I did start implementing the import flow uh, since it was simpler. Um, I don't know. It looked like it was. Um, relatively close to done, but it sounds like you made progress on create as well. So I will share with you the Figma we we have for this test. And okay. there is one page with the slides 
and the page prototype v2 will have updated design i need to update it but we'll have this updated designs we talked today i mean i can i can share it here quickly here so the way that we have it organized is we have the prototype in here so this was the prototype that we tested so the oh, prototype basically has the onboarding part so explaining the features and then taking them into the settings then getting them into the creation wallet uh, uh, you know where they type in the wallet name then they're going to create the password they're going to back up and then they start download so just this bit over here because i think you're fairly familiar with the other bit got it um, yeah yeah so we just create their wallet um it's a confirmation of the type of wallet that they're creating choosing the name choosing the name um, choosing a password, um, understanding, confirming that they've, if they lose their funds, that if they lose their password, that they lose access to their wallet, um, then backing up their wallet, uh, which was that comment about that they were used to the, the C phrase, confirmation that they've backed up their wallet, and then they basically get taken to the, the main screen where um, that was something else that someone commented is that um, in the in the in the prototype is that if this is a new wallet that they're creating, why would the wallet be checking for transactions? The wallet would be not checking for transactions because the wallet wouldn't have any transactions on it. Um, so that was something that we. It's just these small little nuances that I guess you can't really get get them when you're creating the prototype. Yeah, um, there's like. Uh creation height and everything. So yeah, I wouldn't get too caught up on that. Cause I think, uh, uh, like the technical parts of that are, will will resolve all those issues when we actually implement it. But the, how does this look to you, Johnny? Does this look fairly, um... uh, this looks, um, good. I, I actually like this a lot because it's really simple. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I might just run with this. Um, yeah. Uh, and then uh, rather than try to factor in all of the like multi-sig pathing and everything, just, I think that it's better just to start simple so we can get things working. Cause, uh, uh yeah. I don't want to get caught in a sort of, uh, nitty gritty. Yeah. You know, yeah we, fo right? we focus on single on for MVP. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I think that's smart. So I like this. I, I like this a lot. I, um, so, so okay. Johnny, on the left, on the left side in Figma, you have pages, and there's prototype v2, and I'll update it. It's not fully updated with this improved designs, and then below you have also usability test report, and you have you have some I, this is I I might run with this. I you know obviously I got like probably another week before I can do it, but I might uh, might start this then if that if that seems to make sense yep. and the, and i imagine the logic is basically going to be something like only only show this create wallet if there's no uh obvious wallet uh to load in the beginning yeah um, i like double check um the logic with that because yeah. like there i don't know if like i don't off the top of my head i don't know if um you're forced to select a wallet or if there's a default wallet and then, you know, how to resolve passwords and all that. Uh, yeah. I got to double check that. Right. So, so that little bridge right there can be pretty complicated, but, uh, I'll, I think this is good. Uh, yeah. Start. I mean, in terms of changes, I think Jakob, I don't know if you agree with me. There's only, I think the screen that might have the most changes is the, um, what do you call it? Is the storage storage screens? Yeah. But I mean, if if he already starts running with the design, there's going to be some minor copy changes here and there. Um, it's mostly copy in. Well, it's mostly there's, copy. Uh, yeah, 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 and that's that's for the old onboarding. I, I'm more just interested in getting started with the, how to initialize a wallet right now. But yeah. but like when you when you make the the changes for the current onboarding. Definitely just like uh, put a message in the Discord and we can get those PR quickly because it's just, you know, uh, shuffling things around in code that already exists. So that that those changes will be quickly. Uh, yeah. Adapted. So, so let's say, sorry. 
it's an additional one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Well, it, excluding, let's exclude the block clock. I mean, it's an additional one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine screens. Yeah, that's yeah. good. And I, I do think like it does seem like there is um, something we keep missing is uh, what is and don't need to address this any like immediately or anything, but um, what does that this uh, you know this activity screen look like um, if onboarding was already done? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you're loading the app again. This one makes sense. Like it just loads up the wallet. But what if there's no wallet there? Mm -hmm. I don't. We know. have it in a different file, but it's. I'm not sure if it's like finalized. Like okay, it's, that's it's, fine. It's, I'll, I'll, if I'll you hold agree, off on addressing that. That's good. Yeah, because Johnny, um, once you you develop it, we can then move on to the next part because then we do we'll we'll test it after it's implemented and developed. Because the developed version is going to be very different, not very different, but the the user experience and the way they interact with the prototype is going to be very different to how they interact with the the, the developed version. Okay. Because um, we're planning to test that as well, the developed version. Is this uh, single sig the thing you have the most confidence in? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 But, and I wanted to ask. Uh, so let's say we'll adjust the, we adjust these improvements. We test them also, I think with two more users. Yeah. And let's say, and when let's say we'll have kind of ready, ready, ready design. Do you want, how would you like to have it handed? Do you want an issue with this whole flow separate issue or how would you like to have it? Uh, uh, uh it doesn't matter. Um, it's really what you think is the, um, easiest way for you to organize it. Uh, it can be Figma. It can just be a message in Discord. It can it can be an issue on GitHub. Yeah, uh, it doesn't matter that much to me. Um, you know, the the issue maybe is uh, like the not, like the cleanest way to package it all. But if it's a pain to like organize an issue, that, it doesn't matter that much. That, so yeah, okay. what does it feel for this? What if you we can aim to wrap up prototype version two by sort of end of this week, mm -hmm. and end of, and sort of next week Wednesday we have another call, so then we can share that on the next call, and then after that call, if all good, we then are basically giving handing over to the dev, handing over to Johnny. Yeah. 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 I think I, I do think that, uh, you know, just the most important thing feels like the Figma. Yeah. So is, you know, that, that's probably just, just, we just need to make sure that the Figma is in sync. So that's. Yeah, the Figma needs to, I mean, there's, I do know that internally in the project and Christoph is not here now, so I wish he was here, but I know internally in the project, there's sort of this almost like final consensus. So I feel like it, we, we do need to allow one final consensus also just with Christoph on the call as well. Um, and maybe if, if to allow time for that, we could do that on the call next week. I, I'm week. sure you could do it asynchronously as well. Just yeah, we it. could do that asynchronously. Yeah, let's try and do that in the, just in the, in the channel. Yeah. yeah. So I'll just, I'll just sort of post in the channel as a wrap up of our call that, um, I'll just tag Johnny. I'll say Johnny's keen to start getting going with designing the um, implementing the create wallet flow. So if we can start to um, wrap up the designs there, um, uh, you know, consensus on that so that he you can start with that as soon as possible. Yeah, that's that would be excellent. I like your enthusiasm, Johnny. <laughs> go, go, Michael. There's a uh, Johnny brought up a, a good point is what happens, it, but it's just for implementation or it's not for the testing, but um, what what happens if during um, startup, if you find a wallet right in the in this kind of default directory, I think I think there will need to be uh, for that use case, we'll need a screen that says um, we found some wallets. Do you want to load them? Mm -hmm. um, to, to make it to make it transparent to the user 
That's just yeah. Uh, yeah, just something to think about. I I think uh, also. Yeah, well, it'll become apparent when um, we try to use it. Like I I think the create wallet's supposed to have a skip button, so that's that's something to think about, right? Yeah. Okay. If you skip creating the wallet initially, then what does that look like? But these are. You know, there's a lot of extra cases here, but you don't need to solve them all up front, obviously. Exactly, but it, that's something that we don't have on the radar yet uh, at all, right? So that, that's, that's something that we need to think about. Yeah, and it might just be, um, you know, if you skip, we do have like the wallet selector in the top left and like, Maybe uh, the activity is uh, just an add a wallet button. I don't know. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. add a wallet uh, loads the create wallet uh, flow again. Yeah. So it could just right. be that simple, right? Just to have an add a wallet. I, I don't know what that looks like, but. This is sounding very positive. I like the enthusiasm of Johnny to get rolling with it. So I think Jakob and Michael on our side, let's try to wrap up this one as soon as possible so that he can start with implementation. I mean, Jakob, you know, even if the even if we're we're 90% with the create wallet flow and those minor tweaks are copy, you know, we don't need to get the copy feedback again now before I hand over to Johnny. We can always just that's just gonna be copy feedback, which I think will yeah, be sure. very easy to change. Yeah, exactly. You know, um, yeah. Okay, so let's try to do this async and then hopefully maybe even by the next call, Johnny can already show some live, <laughs> <laughs> live developed versions. That's very enthusiastic, but who knows, right? Possibly. I, yeah, I, I started working on import. So I got pretty far on import, but uh, it's kind of nice. hung up with the file selection right now. So, um, but that simplified create wallets got me excited because I, that looks a lot easier to implement than what I was looking at previously with the, right. you know, the, all the selection options. So, so Jakob, what feels good as being the next steps to, so we can get it over to Johnny as soon as possible. So I will adjust the prototype base up perhaps today with this changes discussed today. Yeah. Uh, so you can test it tomorrow. Yeah. And then, yeah, depending on how many stuff will come up tomorrow, but if not much, I will just add it or, or we can add it. And then I guess I'll just prepare, uh, create an issue and just link Figma. I will not describe the, all the stuff in the issue. I'll just link Figma there. So it's easily available on GitHub. Yeah. Sounds good. And then the next step is we test the develop version. <laughs> that is not a yeah, I, yeah, I think hopefully. This QML always takes longer than, than I want it to, but. Um. So Johnny, you're you're excited about it because it's easier than what you're working on right now. Uh, well, it's easier than what I thought I'd have to do next. So. Okay. Cool. Okay. And Good. I just, you know, it, it worries me when it's complicated because it, there's likely something wrong with it. That yeah. It's going to be a real nightmare to. Not wrong, but there's likely something that conflicts with, um, you know, the easy path of hooking into Bitcoin Core. Right. Uh, so the simpler it is, the less likely uh, I hit a roadblock like that, and the quicker we can get feedback and move move forward. Exactly. Yeah. But also, if if you have these points that are hard to hook with Core, as you said, well, you so can just let us, a, we can let us know. Yeah, Here, here's one to think about, and I haven't fully figured it out yet. But um, so on import, there was this idea of like copying and pasting a wallet descriptor. Mm -hmm. um, but in Bitcoin Core, that is done after you've created a wallet. Um, so I, I haven't totally figured out how to resolve that. Meaning that um, it's a two step process. You create a blank wallet and then add descriptors to it. Uh, mm -hmm. where the design was kind of trying to simplify that all into one, and, you know. 
and that's a it's a hard question i mean yeah yeah because yeah, i think the design is better yeah. than the way core is implemented but unfortunately core is is a two-step process so i i haven't figured out how to technically solve that yet yeah but i mean if it's really a big issue then we can just go with not I guess we yeah, can change the design and just go now, off. maybe come yeah. back to it. But I, that was just one example um, of something I saw recently. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah, a few of us have been busy with conference stuff, Michael included. So it's kind of conference season for us at the moment. But um, yeah. yeah, as Michael said, I think once we're all back from from conference season, which is second week of June, um, there'll be a whole bunch of stuff that um, we can be available for. But then that's sort of looking at the next four weeks, you know. So if we if we say, you know, if these designs can already go over to Johnny, then over the next four weeks he can just dig into them, um, and then when we're back from conference season, we can we can work on the on the on the second bit, which is. Uh, no, I, I want to work on it next week. <laughs> <laughs> we can work on the second bit, which is activity, send and receive um, this bit here. So, so yeah, that would be cool um, to do that. And then obviously test these ones once they've been developed. Create wallet flow. Yeah. Yeah, I'm doing another test tomorrow. And I think I'll try if Jakob has a prototype ready, I can test that tomorrow. Um, on, on the person at three o'clock. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Nice All job, right. team. Yeah, that's, that's not cool. Very cool. Is there anything else that we, we need to mention or do you think we should just wrap it up? I don't know. Yeah, I have an onboarding to new Alpi wallet in 15 minutes, so I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll take a time to have a break. Yeah, you can so. have a break, Jakob. Shall we end it then? Yeah, I'll stop the recording. Hang on. <laughs>